Welcome to another Teardown, Furby 2023 edition. Keep watching to see me try it out, take it apart, and analyze the design and manufacturing of the circuitry inside. I'm Becky, and I love to make things, but I also love to take things apart because it can help me understand how things are made. This new edition of the classic interactive toy is more reminiscent of the original than it is to the 2012 version, if you ask me, which I also took apart at the time. In addition to its classic touch interactivity with buttons and sensors, this new Furby also has voice recognition, differentiating between three different phrases. May I take you apart? It's so friendly and not at all creepy like the last one, in my opinion anyway. I found it almost too cute to take apart. Almost. Taking apart Furby starts with the fur. The fabric is sewn to these little plastic tabs that fit into the enclosure. Nothing is glued here. Once it's fabric free, it becomes apparent that a few screws hold the front and back of the plastic enclosure together. Removing them and the plastic revealed even more screws. <laughs> I managed to remove all the various circuit boards like the main one that has everything else plugging into it, the one holding the LED in the ear and the switches inside the face. I disassembled the rest of her by undoing as many screws as I could find until I got to the sticky motor area. Since my friends at Lumafield put this thing in their CT scanner before I took it apart, I let my urge to not get motor grease all over the place express itself. We'll take a look at the scan later. So now that this is an X Furby, it's time for my channel's favorite electrical engineer, David Craner, to take a look at the circuitry inside. Oh, hey, David. Hey, Becky. How's it going? I heard you got a Furby. I did. Well, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> She's still cute. Yeah. Look at her eyes. Cute eyes, just right there. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of they kind of drill into you, don't they, a little bit? Um, so I already took it apart, and um, I don't think I could put it back together. But I didn't have to break very many things. That's good. Which is good. Um, this is obviously this motor core. Mm, interesting. But it has. Two mo I think two motors, one for the feet and one for the eyes. Eyes, yeah. And that its makes feet sense. like makes the whole thing bob it up and down. Like uh huh. And the eyes like blink. Yeah. So I think it has two motors, and then what do you think the other wire is coming off of the? So we got three motor body that I wasn't willing to open because well, it's slimy. This looks like it could be an encoder for one of the motors. So I think we can see which ones are the jabbing tweezers and which ones are the pointers. Those are the jabbing, are the jabbing tweezers. tweezers. We can't really see it because it's still in the plastic, but if you look in the side here, you can see these little holes in this plastic disc that's rotating around. Mm -hmm. And so that would tell me that there's maybe some kind of like break beam encoder in here on this board. I'm sure we'll see it better when we get to the CT scan. So I, I looked at the board and I took some close-up pictures and also you can see on the microscope, but there's an epoxy blob and basically two two chips. Epoxy I mean, there's, there's a, there's something under the epoxy blob, obviously. Um, and then, but then we can look at what these two chips are. Yeah. So often in, uh, in toys that are produced at really high volumes, they'll have the actual main chip or microcontroller in these epoxy blobs because mm -hmm. it's, it's less expensive than like a proper IC packaging. So and it doesn't have, so the reason it's in the epoxy is instead of it being in the square black whatever material that is. Yeah. So like there's no chip underneath that epoxy, there's just the components of the chip? Well, there's like a chip. So like if you look at, well, for example, you know when you, you know when we look at LEDs that are like the multicolor smart LEDs, you can see that little piece of silicon in there. Mm -hmm. That's like a little piece of silicon. That's mm -hmm. a computer chip. And so when you have these um, integrated circuits, you know, with the legs, like we know what they look like, that's also a little piece of silicon like that, but they're, but then it's like wire bonded to the legs inside of this little piece of plastic. And so they call that the packaging of the chip. But 
for the epoxy blob type packaging, they're like saving fractions of pennies by not having that outside and they just get the little piece of silicon and then they wire bond it directly to the Ooh. circuit board. Ooh. And it does have a lot of connections going to it. So yeah. it, it's we can find out how many legs it has uh, once we look at it on the scan. Yeah, I mean, you, see the, you also see these labels on the bottom of the board. I mean, we see like VDD, we see, an analog, we see ADC, which is probably like analog digital converter. We see microphone in, we see encoder in. I mean, this is definitely some kind of microcontroller. This is where, this is the main, this is definitely the main brain. Main brain. Main brain. All right, well, we can try to postulate about what it is on the scan. We move on to this one. Did we find out what that is? No, we just wrote it down. It's a 32 megabit SPI, quad IO, 133 okay. mega, megahertz. Flash memory. Flash okay. memory. Cool. Component identified. What does it need flash memory for? Oh, it stores sound. It has a. It stores your microphone audio, I guess, to analyze it, and yeah. then it also makes sound. So don't you need to buffer? Don't you need flash memory for buffering sound? Yeah, to play probably. Because like flash memory, in terms of like the actual space on a silicon die, mm -hmm. is is often really big compared to other stuff. Mm -hmm. So if they, you know, if people are making just a straight microcontroller, microchip it. It might not have flash memory on, but it'll have connections so you can put an external one so you can add as much as you want. And I mean, 32 megabits flash memory for a toy is decent size, I think. Okay. Uh, you want to move on to the other one that has the label? Other one. That one. DW1084S. 104S. They have it on AliExpress. I saw but, that. But it's what just, is it? It doesn't tell you what it is. You wait for. It could be a motor driver because look, it's hooked up through these huge beefy. These Thing huge that, beefy, says, that says motor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's got these huge beefy uh, traces on the circuit board to a, a header that says motor. So I wonder, maybe it's a motor driver. Wait, what does this uh, say? Oh, yeah, just translate that. Yay! <laughs> okay, yeah. right. okay. okay, great. Well, we found it by translating the Chinese that yeah. came in between the part number and the part size. <laughs> cool. Okay, great. DC motor driver. So we were right, because it's... It's connected to the... It's connected to the thing that says motor. The thing that says motor. We're so smart. All right, what about this one, B1F69? Where is that? There it is. Nope. Next to the inductor. Ooh. Oh, this thing? Yeah, little guy. Uh, what does Google say? It... This smells like a, this whole part of the circuit kind of feels like it might be like a, a boost or buck regulator um, to me because it's located, it's located close to all these giant capacitors and there's this inductor here and often when you see structures kind of like this, it's, it's like a, a booster buck regulator for making a higher or lower voltage uh, rail but where's like actual where does the where's like the batteries come into here like to the board where's oh like they the plug in with the, one of the red um red connectors that's the bat those the base with the batteries two pin three pin it's a three pin, three pin red, red one so, so it's this. that one uh -huh. you want to show it on the microscope uh, this one okay mm-hmm Yeah, that would make sense because then I think this PTC fuse is like right in line with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, that's the bottom of the battery connector there. Mm -hmm. And then you see this is like a positive rail. Mm -hmm. And then it's going into this. This is a PTC, which is a positive temperature coefficient fuse. So basically it's like if it gets too much current, it'll get too hot and it'll turn itself off, but it'll automatically turn itself back on again when it cools down. So it's, so it's a like nice, a safety thing. If the, if the kid yeah. leaves the Furby in the car and yeah, so the Furby won't like start if, a fire. Yeah, or just like if something weird happens to the electronics because weird things happen to, to consumer products that are used by kids. The Furby goes so in the bathtub. Yeah, it's definitely a safety feature. You want to quickly so tour then, us around the other big parts on this board? Yeah, it's, so then it comes out of the fuse and then then power is coming out and it's going into all the rest of everything else. What's so, that round 470 thing? Is that an inductor? This is an inductor, for sure. And what uses inductors? Motors? Well, uh, like, like boost and buck regulators 
Oh, often. like our little I mean, friend, perhaps B one F six nine. Perhaps, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> so I would say like there's probably going to be, there's probably going to be like you know un, un, uh, uncontrolled power coming from the battery, unregulated power coming in from the battery out of this PTC fuse, and then I bet it's going through some kind of like power conditioning circuitry to make it nice for the digital electronics. But then I bet that it also branches out somewhere else and is used for like driving motors directly. Um, and I got the microphone, don't forget. The microphone is here. It's a microphone. Um, the tilt switch is kind of cool. It's super cool. I like the tilt switch. So, again, because it's a toy, if you really need to like save every single, pinch every single penny. We'll be able to see the ball in the x-ray. Oh, I bet. That's going to be really cool. Um, you know, this is cheaper than having a MEMS accelerometer. For sure. Um, like an order of magnitude cheaper. Yeah, like it's be, just like yeah, like I mean, cents or less than a cent. Yeah, I mean it depends on how like the the scale at which they make toys is just so huge and crazy that that the uh, the costs of things are way different than when you're making like one or ten of something off of parts that you put together yourself. So I mean, this little piece of injection molded plastic, if they're making like tens of millions of these, I mean this is like a fraction of a penny to tilt it up, and then this is just a piece of metal with a ball in it. So I mean that's going to be way cheaper than than an integrated circuit with a with an accelerometer or a gyroscope on it. Why do you think it's tilted so that Furby reacts more quickly to being picked up? It, pro it probably has to do with where the how the board sits mechanically inside the Furby and like when they want it when they want yeah. it to trigger because you can hear it. Yeah, you can hear the ball. You can hear it. You bring it close to your microphone. My microphone. <laughs> so you, you can hear when it goes, and so they probably designed this with how they wanted the fur to be used yeah. and when they wanted something to happen when you tilt it. You pick it up, amount. yeah. Okay, so that's those. There's a bunch of labels on the back. Yeah. So that's helpful in us, like, reverse engineering what's going mm -hmm. on where. All the, yeah, and help so us you, plug stuff back nice. in if we they want label, to try. Thanks for labeling stuff, Furby designers. We really appreciate it. Ball switch. Ball switch. Left green, left blue, left red. That's probably to like an LED. I bet it in the is. Ear, it's maybe. the ear. Yeah, and let's ear look LED. at let's yep. look at the ear let's LED. Look at the ear LED. It is just an RGB LED. It's not a smart one because it's got four wires going to it. It's probably just three individual LEDs inside this one single package here. You said you could push on the forehead mm -hmm. and something happens. So you I bet, wake it up. Yeah. Yeah. So I bet this is the little little switch. Little switches are super fun. And then we have like the speaker. Which I didn't, I didn't even situation. take it out of the uh, packaging, but there's a sp yeah. speaker in there. I guess this is a, like a grill. I don't know how to take this apart without destroying this part, because it looks okay. like they pushed it in. It's okay to destroy it. Stand by. Okay. So we got this open. You put it under the microscope and look at oh. the screen. I don't know what's going on here. There's four things. Yeah, two speaker wires and... And the other wires are just wired straight up to this grill. Oh, is it maybe a touch sensor like this? This the, oh. the touch sensor on the head is just this piece of metal. Oh yeah, it's totally, it could be a capacitive sensor then. Yeah, I think so that sensor. it knows when you touch its belly, yeah. Does it know if you touch its mouth? Uh, well, it seems like yeah. the kind of thing it should know how to uh -huh. do. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's gotta be a, it's gotta be a, just like a capacitive sensor. Okay, nice. there we go. And capacitive sensors are great because they're, they're just pieces of metal. They don't require mm -hmm. any moving parts, they don't, yeah. whatever, it can all be done in software. So it's, it's really cheap to add capacitive sensing to things. This is the mouth switch where like you can feed Furby by Putting that's, stuff in her mouth. It's weird. All right. That's yeah. her tongue. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> the tongue is actuated? Yeah, the tongue is actuated. Well, it has a little... Look at the screen. Oh. Maybe use your jabbing tweezers. Yeah. Can we make this move? Yeah, push it. That way. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the tongue actuating. Ooh. So um, is, nom, this nom, a, nom. is this a, is this a linear, linear actuated? No, it's just a switch. Look. Oh, because it doesn't move the tongue, you press the tongue and then it knows that you press the tongue. Yes, 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 yeah, like yeah. this. Beep, boop, boop, you, or you put, you know, you put the pizza in its mouth. Yeah, you mouth. put the pizza. Yeah. The pizza. This pizza? Yeah, that pizza. It's 
It's got a little heart pepperoni on it. She carries it around with her everywhere. Let me get this under the... She never forgets her pizza. She never forgets her pizza. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all the electronics components. Here's what the ear looks like. Furbies love pizza. Is this like Furby New York edition? Furby love... Well, Furby always has loved snacks. Yeah, yeah. But and Furby's not exactly got an hourglass figure. No. So... Exactly. <laughs> Um, here's one of the ear, what the ear looks like uh, before I took the circuit board out. So uh, you can see the LED board in there with mm -hmm. the LED facing like the edge of the plastic of the ear. Oh, it's, oh look at this. Look at how they've done this um, with the wires here. Mm -hmm. See how it's curled around? Yeah. So this is this is this is nice design because it's a uh, it's like strain relief for yep. the wire. So mm -hmm. it's not because it knows that over the lifetime of the Furby. Well, this gear is going to wiggle so many times it could it could fray those wires and so they they took an extra step in the manufacturing process to wrap this around so that it's protected from that so it'll last longer. Do you have any more things you want to talk about before we move on to the scan? I don't think so. I'm really interested to see what the, I bet that encoder is going to look really cool and I'm also interested to see what this uh, this tilty ball switch is going to be like also. Okay, shall we take it to the scan? Take it to the scan. Here is our Look at it. It's horrific. This looks really good in a CT scan. Doesn't it? Uh, sometimes they make some slices for us, but... Oh, that's nice, but this is just the black and white. Oh, I see the encoder there. You saw it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the encoder, huh? Yeah. With the holes. She's got a lot of wires. So also those gears in the middle of the gearbox, mm -hmm. you see how there's those like weird paths? Yeah. I bet, is there a thing, I haven't seen this Furby actually run, but I bet it has like lots of motions where like uh -huh. the ears go and like the feet go back yeah. and forth. So I bet if there is only one motor in here, they probably, they could have designed the system so that, <clears throat> so that something tracks around inside those little tracks and moves everything. That makes sense. It does kind of like yeah. flap its feet and like wiggle its ears in a yeah. not just back and forth manner, but like in a pattern yeah. for sure. So this, yeah, it's cool the way the battery holder is. It's got three batteries in one and direction then the one and then the, the one, yeah. and then the one on, I think it's like the deepest one. So it's on top. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. Oh yeah. Look at that gearbox. Ooh. Yeah, look at it. So do you think maybe the encoder helps it decide which like actions happen? with the motor, since the motor's responsible for the ears and the feet? Well, I think it probably just wants That's to the know. That's the shaft, right? I think That's it probably motion. wants to know, like, when it's completed a whole cycle of motion. Oh, okay. Like, do the, do, do you ever see any of these parts, like, move by themselves, or are they all always moving at the same time together? That. Yeah, so that's probably why, because I bet the gearbox, like, makes everything move at the same time. Yeah, and that then, tracks. And then it probably wants to know like when it's finished doing a cycle so it doesn't like stop in an awkward position. Here's our circuit board. Can we zoom in? Yes. And then can we split this? We'll make this window go away. There are chips. There's our epoxy blob. Epoxy blob. Ooh. You can see, you, here's the probably the best view we have of it, right? Here's like some traces going into it. This is yeah, the, can't really make it this oh, is you, the blob. Some, I see, yeah, there's a little square. Uh -huh, a little square in the middle, in the middle oh, yeah, of the blob. The wow, it's a little. And then I want, the other thing I wanted to see was the tilt ball switch. Uh, which side is it on? This other side. You could actually see it in the non-section view pretty well, I thought. Oh, really? Yeah, when you first pulled it up. Yeah. Because there's just plastic between us and it, so I bet if you like, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, but I wouldn't just slice it to see the ball inside. Oh, yeah. but you think that the outer casing is plastic, so we should see, be able to see the ball. Yeah, yeah, I can see the ball. Is this the ball? Yeah, that's the ball. Totally. And then there's a connection here and a connection here. Yes. I want to slice it. I know. I don't know if we could just saw it in half using your jewelry tools. Oh, we totally could. That's always an option. Destructive analysis? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Becky's favorite analysis. Uh, you know, I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't hate smashing stuff. It's, it's been fun. Okay, so yeah, look at this is, um, and then, so that's the gearbox that does all yeah, the motion stuff. Gear, and then yeah. look at the motor he, back here, right? Uh-huh. It's so, it's so beefy. You can probably see the windings. Oh yeah, did we figure out? Yeah, let's, yeah, there it is. We already found the encoder. But can we look at the like, the, the, oh, the circuit, the circuit the... that's around the encoder? Oh, sure. Because I think it's probably like two walls with like an LED and a, and a receiver and then I bet the wheel goes between it. But I wonder if we can like isolate that structure. For sure we can. Um, remind me where it is again. It's motor. <laughs> oh, we don't remember how that, we don't, here. oh yeah, the motor goes down. So it's on the top. It's on the top. On the, it's on the yeah, top. Okay. Top of the motor box. It's so densely packed. I'm so impressed with how much stuff is crammed in there, yeah. considering none of it is particularly miniaturized. It's true. Yeah, so you see the wheel. Mm hmm. And then it's going between these two bits of plastic, and then there's like some kind of metal situation that they're going between. So can I rotate, rotate his left mouse? Mm hmm. Uh, can I bring this section in? Yeah, there's the encoder there. Oh, yeah, up on the upper right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, there you go. So I bet if you zoom in on that portion and then move the slice through, I bet we'll see the whatever it's inside of. Yep. That could be an LED. And then the other side. We'll see another metal structure on the other side. That could also be an LED. Could be an LED. The other one. Oh, this one, one could be the could LED. Be a transistor. And this one's a phototransistor. Yeah. So it's and then the disc has holes in it. So and it passes right between. So it so it breaks the beam. Those little holes mm -hmm. break the beam as the thing spins around. Cool. Cool. Well, this. We didn't even have to smash it. No, we didn't have to smash it. And this scan is available in the LumaField software if anyone wants to check it out. Do you want to try plugging our Furby, our dear friend Furby back together yeah, and see how it. horrifying that is? Let's see it. So yeah, everything should just plug back in. Let me get some, um, let me get some batteries. JST. So this one, the, the socket came off the board. Oh, whoops. So I was wondering if it was the motor one, but I think it's also this. Switch three. Yeah, it's the capacitive oh, touch sensor capacitive on the... Oh, touch sensor and it's labeled switch three. On so the belly. So it's totally a switch, yeah. Okay. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just... Trying to, just trying to make it all make sense, you know. The main thing I want is this, is the sound. Here's the power. And here's her ears. Here's her capacitive yeah. touch sensor on her hand. And here's the motors. Gearbox. Gearbox is here. You know. There's that. Can you the motor can might you be, have a hard it? time. Oh, sorry. The motor might have a hard time because the uh, the did socket came off. Oh, did it? Okay, that's fine. So no. But we should try it anyway. No flailing. I want to flail. I want to flail. Oh, I see. But the pins are still there. Yeah, exactly. So maybe we can just like put it back in. This is what goes there. This is head mm -hmm. head pad. That seems like it matches. And then power goes here, and then that's all we've got, right? It should be everything. Did you get the mouth sensor? Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah, you Here, plug know. the power in then. Okay. Stand up to get a better angle on this thing. Oh, yeah. Let's try him. She's alive! Oh, she's sleepy. <laughs> she looks looks pretty sleepy to me. Wake up. <laughs> oh, that's the wake. That's the for listening. Oh. I remember I now. The ears are got different color cues that they're doing too. Is this the head pat simulation? Yeah, you just touch it though. You don't. You have to like touch it and not touch it. Oh, maybe she. I know why she's sleepy because her tilt ball sensor is in the wrong position. Oh. 
That's better. Now she's awake. She's asking for food. I just fed her. So she was oh, the because the yeah the tilt ball is yeah. for making her go to sleep. Hey Furby. Hey Furby. For this green glow. Wake up, Furby. <laughs> hey Furby. Dance party. Come on, Furby didn't get that. Maybe because it knows your voice. Yeah, I think so. Hey, Furby. Hey, Furby. Hey, Furby. Dance party. I think she's she's doing her best. This song's how I feel about you, David. Yeah. Great. We'll always be best friends. Always. Always. See, she doesn't mind. Yeah. All right, well, that's that. Song unlock. Pat, yeah, like the Pat more. Pat Furby's head for another song. Pizza wrap. Pizza wrap. She rhymes tummy with yummy. She rhymes tummy with yummy. That's some, that's some ill rhyme. Wow, Furby really is my best friend. She loves pizza like me. She loves pizza. She's got this little thing. Oh, well, thanks, David. Yeah, thanks, Becky. Thanks, Furby. This video is sponsored by DigiKey, which carries tools for your own teardowns as well as some of the components in the Furby circuitry. Head to the link in the description for more info on all the parts we could identify. Let me know what I should tear down next in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on your favorite social media platform. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.